there. Okay, so welcome everyone to class 61, Bible Prophecy on Israel in the Book of Revelation. So this evening we're going to review at first the start of the destruction of political Babylon. So we're in Revelation chapter 18 after spending a long time in Revelation chapter 17. But this is an incredible book, uh, the book of Revelation. Not only do we earn blessings, and it's the only book for which we specifically earn blessings in the Bible, but it tells us so much about the world today and the world that is coming shortly. So let's start. So, Ju, could you please start by reading Revelation 18.4 in English, please? Yes, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that it be not partakers, partakers of her sins, and that we receive not uh, of her plagues. Very good, and well pronounced. So that, that word partakers is not very common, but you took it slowly, you recognize, well, I think takers is a word like take, and a, someone who takes is called a taker. So you say, ah, oh, well, that is par takers. So you did just perfectly. Yeah. Eu vi outra vez do céu que dizia, sai dela, uh, povo meu, para que não sejas participante dos seus pecados e para que não incorras nas suas pragas. All right. So Emily, can you please read question one in English? The phrase, come out of her, my people, also applies to what religion? Okay, what do you think? So remember, th this is uh, a voice from heaven who's talking, and the, the my people is likely referring to who? To the remnant of the Jews, right? Saying, and, and so don't, don't follow the Antichrist. You know, it's, it's time you wake up, my, my Jewish uh, people and brethren. But who else does this apply to? Um, to Catholics. Yeah, it's a great phrase for, for, for our friends in Catholicism, because like remnant Jews who are following something wrong, they are close to us in heart, but they're unfortunately not saved, most likely, right? Only God knows, but it's hard to believe that a Catholic who believes in work salvation, they have to do the sacraments, they have to do X, Y, and Z. Uh, they don't even know they go to, to heaven, but then they, they, they go to purgatory. And, and so it's a whole new gospel. And it's very hard to believe that if someone really believes in the Catholic traditions, they also believe in the Bible um, because they contradict each other. Okay, so let's go to, so Emily, can you please read Revelation 18, seven, please? in English. Um, how much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her, for she said in her heart, I see the queen and, and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Okay, thank you. Quanto ela se glorificou, e em delicias esteve, dai-lhe outra tanto de tormento e pranto, Porque diz em seu coração, estou assentado como rainha, e não sou vi viúva, e não verei o pranto. Ok, so let's, so Monica, can you please read question two in English? Okay. Um, who is in view here and what does live it deliciously imply? Very good. Isn't that a great phrase, live deliciously? Doesn't that, it's, it's one of those phrases where it sounds, it, it's almost like a serpent is saying it, live, <laughs> live deliciously. <laughs> <laughs> so who do you think is in view here and what does living deliciously uh, imply? <laughs> So we're talking about a woman again. So it's it, uh, and and we know from chapter seventeen who that means. It's, but who do you think it, uh, the the female is is back in view here? 
great Babylon. And yes, and you're absolutely right. Is that that who it actually is? But the view is that this sounds very much like the great whore and like Rome. Okay, mm -hmm. so so we're because this is this uh, the the image is very much like the image of the great whore that we just saw. So there's a little bit of mixing. It technically is great Babylon, as we'll see, and and that's and and then we'll get to what what's the difference. Um, but I think we, we covered this last week that we're now, we went from spiritual Babylon now to political Babylon. Uh, and yet we still have the great whore and perhaps Rome in view. So, uh, Ju, can you read question three, please, in English? Um, is a queen in the spiritual, spiritual realm generally a good thing? Okay, so what do you think? Is a queen in the spiritual realm generally a good thing? No. <laughs> yeah, no, unfortunately not. There's, there's a, the best example of a queen, well, there's, there's several good queens, right? There's Queen Esther. Uh, mm -hmm. there's, there's Queen uh, of Sheba, mm -hmm. right? So there's, there's a lot of very good queens who recognize uh, who the true Lord is uh, and but in the spiritual realm, not that many. So uh, Emily, can you please read question four in English? What is Mary called in Catholicism? Okay, so what do you, do you remember? The queen of heaven. <laughs> yes, absolutely, oh my goodness. There's another name which, which uh, I, is, is particularly blasphemous. And there's a town nearby me here in, in Minas by, the, by that blasphemous name. Do you remember what that name is or title? Mother of God. Yeah, exactly. You know, so when I mention that to friends here and they're like, do you realize Madre de Deus? They're like, oh. well, they grew up next to the town of, of <laughs> Madre de Deus. They never thought of what it literally means. <laughs> <laughs> so that happens you're so used to the word that you don't even think what the real you know you know anyway so yes okay so monica can you please read question five in english okay does the bible speak positively of the queen of heaven okay so what do you think hey listen if the catholic church puts mary the mother of god at the top of everything. I mean, she has all the chapels in Europe named after her, all Our Lady of X, Y, and Z. She's a complete idol. So obviously that name, Queen of Heaven, must be a positive name in the Bible, right? Oh, and the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> like, just because the, you know, the Catholic Church seems to believe that it are, are, are intends it as a positive name doesn't mean that the Bible speaks positively of it. I think we have two of the main examples here. So Jude, can you read Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 18 in, in English, please? Uh, the children gathered wood and the fathers kindly defied it. And the woman knew uh, their dog to make cakes of uh, the queen of heaven mm -hmm. and to pour out drink offerings and to other gods that they may provoke me to anger. Very good. What, one pronunciation suggestion. When it says in the top line, and the fathers kindle the fire, I think you might've said ki kindle, but yeah, kindle. But, but even though kind is right in, in, in this case, no. Uh, and I don't know if you've heard, there's a, the brand name for an ebook reader called Kindle. So it's the same idea. So Kindle is the verb for making, uh, for starting the fire. Uh, does any, who has Jeremiah already? I was, I was paying more attention to Jews pronunciation. Do you, do, who has that in Portuguese, please? I don't have my Bible in Portuguese. No problem. Oh, I think I, I just found found it myself. 
Okay, I got it. Seven, eighteen. Eus filhos, os filhos apanham a lenha, e os pais acendam o fogo, e as mulheres preparam a massa para fazer um bolos, a rainha dos céus, e oferecem libações a outros deuses, para me prosacaram a ira. Uh oh. So, and this, this uh, Jeremiah is condemning Judah's idolatry. And so, obviously, to make cakes to the Queen of Heaven is not a good idea. But let's go to the next one. And that would be Emily. Can you read Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 17 in English, please? But you will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her. As we have done, we and our fathers, our kings are, and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of victuals and were well and saw no evil. Very good. So this is about the stubbornness of the people. And you pronounce that, that new, probably new word correctly, victuals. And we'll see from the Portuguese if it clar clarifies what it is. So, mas certamente cumpriremos toda a palavra que saiu da nossa boca, queimando incenso, incenso a rainha dos céus e oferecendo-lhe libações, como nós em nossos pais, nossos reis e nossos príncipes temos feito. Nas, nas cidades de Judá e nas ruas de Jerusalém. E então tínhamos fartura de pão e andávamos alegres e não viamos mal algum. algum. Ok? So, victuals, I'm not sure it's, it, there's a, 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 victuals is like food. It's synonymous with food. So, we had plenty of food. Ok. So, all right, so let's go to Monica. Can you please read question six in English? Okay. Who was the queen of heaven in viewing Jeremiah's time? Okay, so do you remember, we, we discussed this briefly last time, but who is Jeremiah referring to? Because there actually was a queen of heaven that was worshiped by the stubborn Jews, the stiff necked Jews. So who was the queen of heaven? Does anyone remember? It wasn't Mary. <laughs> not, not yet. <laughs> All right, it was the chief goddess in Babylon. Okay, so the top of the, makes sense, queen of heaven, it must be like a goddess who's up there, right? So she's, she's the chief goddess in the Babylon system. But the interesting thing is she went by the name of Ishtar, which was in Sumeria, uh, that name, and or Semiramus. All right, and we'll look more at that name, Semiramus. So that was so Jude, can you please read Jeremiah 44 19 in English, please? And when we burn incense to the queen of heaven and pour out drink offers unto her, did you make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offers unto her without our men? Yeah, you say, as I mentioned last time, where are the men doing these things without your husband, doing these bad things, and the, the husbands aren't there to hold you back? Uh-oh, watch out. So this is 44.19. E quando nos queimávamos incenso a reina dos céus, e lhe ofereciamos libações, acaso lhe fizemos bolos para adorar, e oferecemos lhe libações sem nossos maridos? Now, what, what is the, and I, I didn't, well, well, I will get to question seven in a, in a second. What does that image sound like? What, what would be the, the comparison to, to today? If you saw a bunch of women doing all these things together, what does it sound like? Uh, 
worship. <laughs> worship, okay. But but if, but, wor but worship of a bad kind, Emily. What are what do you think? Idolatry. Yep. And and to be yeah. more specific, it sounds like witchcraft. Oh yes. Okay. So remember, they're all there's only women there, and they're like burning incense. They're pouring out drink offerings. They're making cakes to worship her. You know, maybe there's a fire and they're dancing around it. I mean, who now? Who knows? It sounds like witchcraft. And you know what? It probably was. But now let's look. So uh, question seven. Uh, Emily, can you please read question seven in English? These idol worship remind us, reminds us of which major religions rituals. Okay, so what do you think? So this, this idol worship reminds us of which major religions rituals? There's one with uh, Islam that they dance to Allah. In a very okay, crazy that could be, yeah. all right. But it doesn't actually say they're dancing. That was my imagination, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was getting into the witchcraft imagery around the fire. <laughs> oh, what, what do we have here? We have burning of incense, pouring of drink offerings, and making cakes to worship. Yeah, witchcraft. What, what, but what major religion does this parallel? Catholicism. Okay, again, I'm not trying to beat up on our, our sisters and brothers, sort of, in the Catholic religion, but the parallel is uncanny. All right, burning incense. Uh, that is part of, of particularly the Orthodox Catholic Church ritual. Uh, pouring out drink offerings sounds like what? Sounds like the wine of communion. And, and making cakes to worship her sounds like what? The wafer in English or the bread. Okay, so you have three major elements of Catholic worship uh, here reflected in this, uh, in this very old verse. Wow. Okay, so let's go to Monica. Can you please read question eight in English? In Revelation uh, 18, mm -hmm. 7, what mind am um, no widow referred to? Mm -hmm. Okay. What is, what is M no widow? And that's referring back to the, the verse. Okay, so look back at verse 18, 7. And so you see, I, I put a, a small bit of the verse in quotes. As you see, it says, I sit a queen and am no widow. So this, this person is boasting. It's like, I sit a queen and I am no widow. So, so this, this question is, what might am no widow refer to? So what, what is this queen of heaven referring to when she says am no widow? Because it's like, huh. What does being a widow have to do with anything? Well, it's a little complicated, and we looked at this uh, briefly last time, but here we have uh, a compilation I found online on Semiramis. And now remember, Semiramis was one of the names of the chief goddess in Babylon, or the queen of heaven. Okay, so this and this is a little bit of legend because it's not exactly in the Bible, but it's believed that Semiramis was both the mother and wife of Nimrod. Because in the Bible, it doesn't mention who, who you know, the name of Nimrod's mother or wife. So it's not technically in the Bible, but it's believed. Uh, and Baal is, uh, is another biblical name that we see uh, that is not, does not have positive connotations. And some believe, again, it's not clear in the Bible, but that Nimrod and Baal were the same person. Here it says she, she was called Ishtar. Uh, and this apparently is one of the roots of the word Easter in English, which is not very positive, <laughs> right? So the, the English holiday Easter is, is perhaps not uh, uh, named well. Uh, and you 
look at, okay, that this same Semiramis uh, looks like she's Isis in Egypt and now Mary in the Catholic Church. Now, the, the interesting thing is, so you look at these ancient images and what you have are a lot of <clears throat> Madonna and child. So here, here's a, a Catholic image, right? Madonna and child. Which is which is uh, you know not not very biblical because uh, uh, you know Jesus Christ is no longer a baby. <laughs> he grew up uh, and he's now a mature man, uh, uh, glorified uh, at at the right hand side of his father. Um, so worshiping part of worshiping Mary seems to be putting Jesus in a little baby position with Mary, which is. Not, not. I don't believe that Jesus would want to be uh, remembered that way. Uh, but what's interesting? Look at, but the similarity. So this is pointing out something interesting. A lot of ancient religions have a mother and child image that's similar. So maybe we'll come. We have some other images here about how Semiramis or Isis, a sun goddess. Uh, and we start getting these images of a sun goddess. Uh, here, I think this is 20th century Fox, uh, their, their symbol at the beginning of their movies. I'm not sure who this is, but here is the Statue of Liberty uh, outside of New York, given to the United States um, uh, by France. Here is the Starbucks image of a kind of Gaia, uh, Mother, Mother Earth, uh, and perhaps Semiramis and Isis image as well, and it goes on. So, um, so, so, and and the the so the widow is a little bit complicated, but in Freemasonry, Jesus is widow's son, um, and why that is, I don't know. Uh, but no one else refers to Jesus as a widow's son, right? Because Mary Joseph didn't die and leave Mary alone and in the Bible anywhere. So why you would call Jesus a widow's son is odd. Uh, and so anyway, so, so uh, Nimrod and Semiramis had a child named Tammuz, and it was the start of sun god worship. Um, but anyway, so th that gets a little esoteric because it's, it's not in the Bible, a lot of this, but it's also... Um, of potential interest, or at least it helps us explain perhaps some of the verse we just read. All right, so, so esoteric is maybe a new word, so there it is. So let's, uh, and let's continue a little bit more on the Queen of Heaven. So back to you, Ju, can you read question nine in English, please? Yes, uh, what else is the Queen of Heaven correct? Characterized as in the Revelations uh, 18:7. Okay, so uh, we 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 just read again Revelation 18:7, uh, which is talking about the, the the Queen of Heaven. And so the question is, well, where is is there another Queen of Heaven or an image similar? And indeed, there is, and it's in the next verse. So the answer is Isaiah. Uh, 47 8 and so so Emily can you please read Isaiah chapter 47 8 for us please in English therefore hear now this thou that art given to pleasures that dwellest carelessly that sayest in thine heart I am and none else beside beside me I shall not sit as a widow neither shall I know the loss of children Okay, so there's that strange thing that I shall not sit as a, wit a widow. So, so anyway, this is obviously a direct parallel between um, the New Testament and the Old Testament. So let me, I think I have, agora, pois, ouvi isto, tu que és dada a prazeres, que habitas tão segura, que dices no teu coração, eu o sou, e fora de mim não há outra, Não ficarei viúva, nem conhecerei a perda de filhos. So this is, this is a, obviously a, a very um, evil statement. And remember that there, there's in the middle of this verse, uh, this, this, this woman says, I am. 
And who else says I am in the Bible? God. Right. <laughs> exactly right. That's in fact, Jesus identifies himself. The Jews immediately recognize that he is being, that he is claiming to be God when he says, before uh, Abraham, I am. He didn't say before uh, Abraham, I was, which is kind of, <laughs> how would that make sense? Could he be, uh, you know, what was the age? Could he be a thousand years old, Jesus? But, but he didn't say I was, he said, I am. Right. So they recognize that, that the phrase I am is a declaration of I am God. So that this is, this is not very good. So Monica, can you read question 10 in English, please? Okay. When approximately, approximately uh, did Isaiah profess and why is that important? Okay. So that was a tough word, approximately, approximately. Isaiah has the em emphasis on the front. So it's Isaiah in English. Yes. And that word, it's, it's tough because in the noun, you, 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 pronounce, you pronounced it correctly as a noun, but here it's a verb. And so the <laughs> noun is prophecy, but the uh -huh. verb is to prophesy. All right, uh -huh. remember English is, is irregular. <laughs> <laughs> words can be like spelled sound exactly the same spelled the same way but then sometimes pronounced differently all right so this is just kind of a new question but who remembers around what time did isaiah prophesy all right so it's a long time before jesus it was the early eighth to late seventh centuries before christ so you're talking about 700 years before Christ. Now, why, why, do, why am I adding this? Why might this be important? Because he, he predicted Jesus. Isaiah certainly did. Yeah. In this verse, it sounds like he, he is... Uh, talking about the queen of heaven, though, right? So, so this is like the widow, I, I am and none else besides me, I shall not sit as a widow. So all of this is tying with Revelation 18.7. But you're on to the right thing, Jew, because the, the question is, well, wait a second. So Isaiah knew about the queen of heaven and is talking about it. 700 years before Jesus Christ, before Mary was born. Uh, and just to, to remind you, let's take a look at some of these images again. So, so I don't know if, if I think this is, this is maybe a Sumerian image. I'm not sure. Maybe this is Isis from Egypt. Um, but what you're looking at is, well, what's going on? Look at that. I mean, that's, that's like it's anticipating Madonna and child. Now, and I, so why is that kind of interesting? Because secular and skeptics, secular people, professors, skeptics, they would probably tell you that, you know what, that whole, you know, Madonna, Mary, and Jesus thing, none of that really happened. That's just patterned after the ancient legends or myths of the Sumerians and Egyptians. So it's, 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 uh, it's, it gets a little complicated. So, so that Isaiah was prophesizing about this 700 years beforehand, talking about a queen of heaven who we now uh, can interpret given our advanced state of knowledge and thousands of years later we kind of understand well that queen of heaven was kind of like mary unfortunately the catholics in fact call her the queen of heaven uh and and yet these old cultures were already uh anticipating that and so that that's i just want to point that out and so so it may well be that satan uh kind of knew what was coming 
right? He kind of knew that the Catholics would, would set up a, an idol worship. Uh, and so he was anticipating that. Or uh, the Catholic Church knew about, uh, you remember when Emperor Constantine took over or co-opted Christians and then developed uh, the church into the Catholic Church, that he, he, he mixed it with lots of paganism. So that's another explanation, that the Catholic Church knew very well the pagan legends of Semiramis uh, with, with uh, Tammuz, uh, her child, and et cetera, et cetera. And so they patterned Mary with this mother of God and Madonna and child image after the, the older legends, okay? So I just wanna, it's kind of interesting. Um, you know, we, we know that, um, that many, many primitive um, found in creation myths of many tribes, of Indian tribes, of, in, you know, of, of Asian tribes, of ancient civilizations, many, many of them include great floods in their legends. And so the, the, the either you say, okay, they are telling the truth because that's, that's, that's in the historical knowledge of all these people who were separated by the Tower of Babel. They all knew that there was a flood and therefore they talk about it. Or if you're a secular professor skeptic, what you say is that the Christians, they picked up these old flood legends and, they turned, and then they turned it into the Bible into the they put it into Genesis because they already knew that the a lot of places talked about a flood event. <laughs> so, so but again, that's a similar thing. All right. So it's a little complicated, but we know that the Bible is true and that uh, it anticipates. Uh, it tells us about a lot of interesting things in history and that a lot of pagan history confirms uh, what the Bible is talking about. So let, let's move on now. We're going to move on to the continuation of the destruction of political Babylon. So in one sense, we're now finally getting some judgment uh, and to come down on this very sin-filled earth. And so while sad, it's also uh, joyous in some ways. So Ju, can you please re read Revelation chapter 18, verses 9 and 10? And the kings of the earth who have commit, committed uh, fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning and stand afar off the fear of her tor torment. Say, alas, alas, that great city Babylon that my city for in one hour is thy judgment come. Very good, those are uh, two big verses. One, one suggestion in the second line shall bewail her. Yeah, bewail. Yeah, okay. What, what it means bewail, I don't remember. Well, and we'll see in the Portuguese, but it's, it's like lament, which, which okay. is then, and, he, and here we have a case where the, the Bible is a built-in dictionary because you go two words later and you have lament. Mm -hmm. And so, so it's actually one of my favorite uh, Bible scholars is a lady named, here we go, Gail Ripplinger. Uh, here, here, here was a, a book that made her famous called New Age Bible versions. I think is her name there. She's she's a modest, so she doesn't really include. Oh, there we go. You can see Gail Ripplinger here, uh, and she she wrote a big book, twice as thick on this, on how the Bible is it's has a, has a built-in dictionary, and if you you look at a, a word and you don't really understand what it means because it's new, often you can you can learn from the context. And this is a great example. So bewail her and lament for her, it's synonymous. 
So l lament is to be saddened, to, to almost be crying for. All right, so I, I'm not sure if lament has a direct, but let's, let's see what the Portuguese says, because maybe that'll give us a, a good direct translation in Portuguese. So 9, 10. Eu reis da terra que fornicaram com ela e viveram em delícias e chorarão e sobre ela pra, prantearão quando viram a fumaça o seu incêndio. Estando de longe pelo temor do seu tormento, dizendo aí, aí, daquela grande cidade de Babilônia, aquela forte cidade, pois em uma hora veio o teu juízo. Ok. And, so there, there's that lovely phrase again, and live deliciously with her. <laughs> it's like, wow, that serpent is like, wow, he loves that. <laughs> All right, so, so let's go to question A, and that would be, uh, uh, we just changed order a little bit, but that's gonna be to Emily, please. Question A in English. Which great city Babylon is in view? Okay, so remember Babylon was, was, was used also in chapter 17. Now in chapter 18, things have changed a little bit. So which great city Babylon do you think is, is in view? Is it Rome, for instance? I don't think so. Okay. Because remember, when we, when we concluded from, from Revelation chapter 17 that mystery Babylon was certainly Rome, but now we're, we're, we're in the great, we're in the city, we're in great Babylon. We're no longer in mystery Babylon. And so the Bible has changed terminology subtly. Uh, and so this is more likely to be the actual Babylon, okay, which is in present day Iraq. So let's move on to, so Monica, can you please read Revelation 18, 14 in English? Okay. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and clothy, good cloth, no, goodly, are the departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. <laughs> okay, so this this sounds like the great city Babylon is uh, in trouble, or in one hour is thy judgment come. So let me see. E o fruto do desejo da tua alma foi se de ti, e todas as coisas gostosas e excelentes se foram de ti, e não mais as acharás. Okay, so that's, that's uh, we're now uh, describing the destruction of political Babylon. But let me go to Jew and question B in English, please. Uh, while you directed towards Babylon, this verse also applies to whom? Um, okay, to whom? So that's like, whom. A, yeah. Uh, so what do you think? So I just thought of this while, while I was preparing the class. This, this is a, 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 a incredible, it's obviously talking about Babylon. So the fruits of thy soul left the master are departed from thee and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee. And thou shalt find them no more at all. Who else does this verse apply to? It's a good verse for all the unsaved people in hell. Right? So it's saying the fruits that thy soul lusted after during your time on earth. <laughs> They're all gone, right? You know, your Rolls Royce, your Mercedes Benz, your all the things that you loved here and worshipped on this earth are gone. And all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. Okay, so I just said, well, there you are. That's not, it's not just Babylon, it's all those poor people who end up in hell by their own 
pride and stubbornness, not because God wanted them to go there, but because they refused his free gift offering. And so, uh, Emily, can you please read Revelation 18, verse 20, please? Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. Okay, so you see there, here comes the joy. Uh, Alegre te sobre ela, o seu e vós santos apóstolos e profetas, porque já Deus julgou a vossa causa quanto a ela. And then, Monica, can you please read Revelation, the next verse, Revelation chapter 18, verse 21. Okay. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, sea saying, thus which violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown tr tr down and shall be found no more at all. Wow, there's a lot of destruction uh, occurring on this one city. E um forte anjo levantou uma pedra como uma grande mo e lançou no lançou a no mar dizendo como igual impeto será lançado Babilônia aquela grande cidade e não será jamais achada wow okay so let's look at the uh so Ju can you please read question C in English what what is the sequence of disasters that uh, visit Babylon Okay, so let's review before we answer that question. Then, Emily, can you please read Revelation 16, chapter 16, verses 19 to 20 as a reminder? Yes. Uh, yeah, just real quickly, I have a question. Why does, why does it say avenged you on her? Why did they use the preposition on? It doesn't make sense to me. Okay, it's a, it's a little bit of a, and sorry, which verse is that? It's Revelation 18, 20. Okay, there we go. On, on top of, when yep. you use the position on. Okay, well, it, it's, uh, uh, it, the construction is a little bit different than, than, than uh, modern construction, but God, God has avenged, you, re, you remember all those souls under the altar who are, crying out for justice and to be avenged yes uh i forget which chapter in revelation an early one like chapter five and they're told to patience okay mm -hmm. your your deaths your your persecution on earth your martyrdom they will be the uh, they will be of uh, you will be avenged and justice will be had so when when mm -hmm. it says god hath avenged you speaking to those martyrs who are saying, you know, saying you have to avenge us. We were we were grossly persecuted. We were murdered. We were martyred, and so God has avenged you on her. And it's actually it's a correct uh, uh, construction. For God hath avenged you. Her doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's avenge you. So who is he avenging? Those martyred souls. And on whom? So who is receiving the judgment? Avenging on has the sense okay. of that the judgment is poured out on whom? Okay, oh, so okay. avenged on her. Okay. And if it was uh, avenge you of her, it, it was uh, it would be wrong. Yeah, I don't uh, I don't think you would you would use. And there's so many. Um, it's one of the complicated parts of English. There are so many different prepositions. And, and it's hard to tell exactly which one, but you, you, um, it's possible you can be avenged of something, but okay. then it would be just avenged of, um, avenged of your persecution, but it doesn't oh, say, okay. it doesn't say who was avenged. Okay. So in this case, it's like, okay, so it's avenged. You were avenged for your persecution 
on someone. So, so the avenging was done on someone. But you're right, it also can be avenged of with a slightly different meaning. Okay, thank you. You bet. It's Good question. Revelation 16, 19 to 20. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God, to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Okay, very well pronounced. So remember, all the way back in chapter 16, not so long ago, but that gave a summary idea of what was going to be happening, and we're now back and seeing it more slowly treated. But here, let me, let me read that one, first of all, in Portuguese. E a grande cidade fendeu-se em três partes, e as cidades das nações caíram, e da grande Babilônia se lembrou Deus, para lhe dar o cálice do vinho da indignação da sua ira. E toda a ilha fugiu, e os montes não se acharam. Okay, so, so, oh, did I get that, that correctly? Oh, in three parts, nations fell. Oh, maybe that went on. Okay, did I get that? Well, anyway, I mean, I'm not sure that I read the, the correct Portuguese. Or uh, maybe I mislabeled 19 and 20. But uh, back to question C. So question C is, what is the sequence of disasters that visit Babylon? So I took us back to, to Revelation 16, because here we have what? What, what is the, I, I don't know where the, why I got the Portuguese wrong. Maybe, maybe I have the chapter wrong, because I obviously was not right reading the, the, the translation, correct? So my apologies. And they'll say in place parties. Okay. Okay, but we'll just have you'll just have to, to uh, go with the English then. We'll all we'll okay. find we'll find mm -hmm. the correct one. But here there was a great earthquake. So mm -hmm. it's and it does talk about the great Babylon, uh, and and it was divided into three parts. Uh, so yeah, I guess it's just that the the oh I'm sorry it was it was a uh, uh, verses eighteen through perhaps 20. So let me just read 18. E houve vozes e trovões e relâmpagos, e houve um grande terremoto como nunca houve desde que há homens sobre a terra. Tal foi este tão grande terremoto. Okay, so, so I, I, was, uh, I, I mislabeled that by one, one verse. It was, so it was Revelation 16, starting with verse 18. So there we have, so the first thing brought upon uh, Great Babylon was what? An earthquake. Okay, so there's a big earthquake. Uh, it, this great city is divided into three parts. The cities of the nations fell. So it, it's, it sounds like this huge earthquake destroyed all other cities in the world, but Babylon was just divided into three parts. So it's not completely destroyed yet. And then we return now to what came next, and that is up in Revelation 8, 10, 9 to 10, and there it talks about Babylon and the smoke of her burning. All right, you see that? You go up a, like half a page, Revelation 18, 9 to 10, and it says, for they shall see the smoke of her burning standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. So we start with earthquakes, and then it looks like she's burning. Mm -hmm. And then the verse that we just read, now to uh, uh, verse 1821, talks about what? And mighty angel takes up a stone like a great millstone and casts it into the sea. And so what does a huge stone do cast into the sea? It creates waves, right? Or a tsunami. Yes. So it's a massive wave 
And who knows, may, maybe in the earthquake, a large part of the coast falls, uh, who knows? But Babylon is finally destroyed by water, right? Because it's the millstone is cast into the sea, thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Completely destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the earthquake was not enough. It was only divided in three parts. It burned, uh, you know, but that didn't completely destroy it. But now the tsunami or, or some big massive occurrence completely obliterated Babylon. Praise the Lord. Okay, so just to, to show God's wrath can be complicated three-step, <laughs> right? Not all at once, all right? So this is like a special judgment brought on Babylon. Okay, so let's finish up now. So we were, that was, that was uh, Emily, thank you. And so Monica, can you please read Revelation chapter 18, verses 23 and 24 in English? And then light, of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. Mm -hmm. And the voice of the bridegroom mm -hmm. and of the bride shall be heard, heard, okay. heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants mm -hmm. uh, were the great men of the earth. For by Thy sorceries, sorceries, mm -hmm. where all nations deceive it or deceive it. Deceive, you were right, yeah. Deceive. And in her was found the blood of prophets mm -hmm. and of saints and of all the that were slain upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, let me go directly to the, so these, these are the last verses of chapter, Revelation chapter 18. A luz da candeia, now mais lu, luzera em chi. A voz de esposo e, da, e de esposa, now mais em chi se uvará. Porque os teus mercadores eram os grandes da terra. Porque todas as nações foram engan, enganadas. Pelas, pelas tuas fetiçarias. Wow. That is... Ah, e nela se achou o sangue dos profetas e dos santos e de todos os que foram mortos da terra. All right, so political Babylon and the great horde together from the sound of it, they were responsible for a huge amount of evil and destruction on earth. So then, so Ju, can you please read question D in English? I mute because so many, so much uh, loud um, oh, noise okay. here. No, no problem. Uh, yeah, so question D, please, in English. Okay, sorceries implies what about Babylon and the great horror? Okay, so as we just read, it says, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Okay, so, so what does sorceries imply about Babylon and the great whore? Did we read, uh, is that, is the word in, in Portuguese? Well, I don't, I'm not really seeing it there. So, but so, oh yeah, the feitiçarias. Mm. Okay, but I, I think, I think uh, feitiçarias is actually, it's a little more uh, witchcraft. Yes. Okay, in English, but sorceries. So in fact, so sorceries implies what about Babylon and, and the Great Horror? Well, one thing I was going to say is, is, is what the, the Portuguese translation hints at. Sorceries is like witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so by sorceries were all nations deceived. Uh, and so in a sense, this, this, this uh, great whore, this religious system, this political economic system, 
uh, is has a lot of witchcraft in it. Now, I don't know if you remember, and rare, rarely do I go to the, the Greek, but the word, uh, the Greek word behind sorceries in English or translated as feitiçarias in Portuguese is an interesting word called pharmakia. And so what does pharmakia sound like? So this is a case where I'm not, I'm not correcting the English or the Portuguese translation. I would never think of doing that, but this is adding a layer of meaning. It's like adding another layer, like, well, okay. So I know, so that this word witchcraft, sorcer sorceries, but if the Greek word is pharmakia, what does pharmakia sound like? And it sounds like Pharmacy. this. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Okay. so. It actually is more, it's more mm -hmm. like drugs. Okay, so, mm -hmm. so the implication here, which is kind of interesting for that now that we are in the end of the end times, that it sounds like, drug, you know, by use of drugs are all nations deceived. So, so you know, don't be surprised that now in 55% of the US, uh, you can, uh, all adults can buy marijuana. Okay, so, so uh, it sounds like drugs are being, are being more and more widespread. Uh, I don't know what it's like for you, Ju, but when, whenever I go to, uh, to the beach in Miami Beach, you smell marijuana oh. smoke all the time now. Oh, okay. here too. And unfortunately, that's because in the last election, Florida, by referendum, allowed medical marijuana. Yeah. No, okay. here it is a lot. Yeah. Okay. And, and, uh, and, and here, I, I went to a park yesterday uh, and uh, some, some tendas, some uh, little... Um, um, tent mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for uh, sell um, a lot of kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, and the guy asked me if I I, I uh, do you want a sample of marijuana? <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. But but is mar marijuana for uh, medic um, medication? Purpose. Sure, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, and, I, and, that's, and that's because Florida recently voted or made medical marijuana legal, which now yeah. means that, in fact, it's used illegally, <laughs> not for med medicinal purposes, but for getting high. So don't yeah. be surprised. Drugs are, and I'll just add a comment here. So if she's deceiving the entire world in part through drugs, I, there's another kind of new drug out there which might be deceiving the whole world. It's called a COVID vaccine. Okay, so I just want to put that out there. It's like, well, the, you know, so mandatory drugs. Okay, and that's what a mandatory vaccine is. Ma it's mandatory. Take this drug or you cannot go to restaurants. You cannot da, 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 da. So anyway, so let's, let, I'm going to end with a, with a, a explosive question. So that's e. back to, so Emily, can you please read question E in English? Who is the first witch in the Bible? Okay, so let's see, who do you think? <laughs> okay, who knows their Bible history? So let's think back. You have to go back to the Old Testament. For sure. And, you know, we're not just talking about that witch who brings up Samuel, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? right? That was like obviously a witch. It said, you know, okay, I'm thinking before then, before then. Any guesses? Before who? Before <laughs> yeah. the witch, uh, I, uh, Nordor, I forget, Nordor or something, who, oh, who okay. brought up the spirit of Samuel. And was okay. scared because Samuel actually came up, not one of. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so go back further. Who, who's an earlier example of a witch? 
Jezebel, Jezebel, I don't know. Okay, that might be true. I, I don't remember it. Is that earlier? Uh, but I, I would yeah. go earlier. Go earlier. <laughs> it's... Yes, that's very interesting. <laughs> so wait, where does that come from? Where was that? The serpent. And where was the serpent uh, doing his thing? And where was he tempting? Um, because the serpent isn't a, isn't a witch. Yeah, but, but who did he tempt? The Eve. Yeah. Um, that's it. That's that's the answer. So the first witch in the Bible is Eve. Now, why do I call her a witch? And and it, it's and I'm not being mean on women. I'm just trying to point out that the Bible starts with with a with a, a witch, and it's and we're now getting towards the very end. Right where it's it's you know mystery Babylon and great Babylon are witch like. So so why do I say Eve was the first witch? Well, she wanted to be as God. Okay, so she she took she wanted power. She wanted uh, you know she wanted to eat of the tree of of uh, of knowledge. So she wanted, she wanted, uh, what are they called? Like mystery powers. She wanted a cult. A cult means hidden. She treats, she tried treat God. Trick God, yeah. But mm -hmm. the, so, so, so she was, uh, she accepted the serpent's uh, deal because the serpent promised her, like, well, you're not going to die. You're gonna, you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna, you know, either the the tree of knowledge. You'll be incredible. You'll have like hidden knowledge that you'll have uh, knowledge and wisdom that God refused to give you, that He was keeping from you, mm -hmm. right? And so you do this, and you'll be as a god. And Eve went, goody, goody, goody. <laughs> right? That's what I want. Okay, so that kind of sounds like the first witch, all right, that she, she disobeyed God, she disobeyed her husband, she didn't consult with, with Adam, she said, you know what, I want these powers now for me, and they're hidden powers, that's what the word occult comes from, so it's like hidden knowledge, hidden powers, so, so it's sad, sad but true, um, and and remember, you know, it's not it's not to there's such a thing as a warlock, uh, and that's a male witch, right? I don't know if there's a a word for that in Portuguese, but a male witch is called a warlock. And so this is not a a you know what Eve wanted to do is not specific to women. All right, it's it's a general problem for mankind. But the Bible is making a point that uh, uh, the, fir the first uh, uh, succumbing to temptation was by a female witch. And the end times now that we're coming too closely or, or rapidly will involve a female figure identified as Rome uh, and all of these things, the, the, the idol worship of Mary that will pull all the religions together, Mother Earth, Gaia, so that we will in the end times, in the it sounds like we will have a goddess worship. You know, so it's like the answer to Eve's dreams. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> okay, so, so you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's not to beat up on women, but God is making a point, okay? And he's, he's, he's alerting us uh, that women who, who do not respect the natural order and do as God wishes them to do, they can get into real trouble, okay? And they, they got into trouble back in the Garden of Eden, uh, Eden and, we're, gonna, and we're, we're hurtling towards real trouble now with goddess worship 
with feminism, with all, all of these things that are now coming together. So enough said. Any questions or comments? And don't, again, I don't don't think Ben does not like women. I love women. <laughs> I'm just trying. Not sure. to, oh, please do. All right. I'm just trying to be specific and to point out what the Bible is telling us. No, I know. I know. I understand. <laughs> so and any questions or comments? I have a, a comment about uh, Mary. We received a book from uh, a friend, and the author was Catholic, and um, and I didn't realize. But throughout the book, it was a um, a book talking uh, against uh, feminism. So I thought it would uh, be sorry, a against book. what? I didn't have to, against against uh, feminism. Okay. Uh huh. It was explaining like the history of feminism and how uh, God designed designed women to be. Uh, so I thought it would be a great book, but then when I came to the end, there was a lot of things about Mary, and she said, uh, uh, for example, uh, that uh, the devil doesn't fear God as much as he feared, fears Mary, <laughs> and a lot of things like that. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> like it was, and, uh, and it also said like it was an honor for God to be born through Mary or something like that. It's weird, very weird things. Wow. Uh, I don't know how sometimes people try to uh for example in that book we receive we receive it from a christian friend but um uh, that try to uh how do you say uh, uh kind of tempt you with with doctrine yeah similar to yeah. that uh yeah. i just thought it was interesting to see it i didn't know that uh some catholics take takes uh mary worship very seriously it's very sad a lot a lot yeah, and, and what it's an example of is, is bad doctrine, right? Because yes. true good doctrine is all here, yes. right? So that's good doctrine. Bad doctrine, uh, and in fact, it's called doctrine, the doctrine of devils. I forget, uh, you know, whether it's Corinthians or something, but it's like the devils, have their own doctrine yes okay and the, and that doctrine is creeping in to the good doctrine all the time okay so that's that you know we all use the example of prosperity church that's the doctrine of devils mm -hmm. all right making its way into the church and remember uh ladies that uh in the great tribulation uh everyone at first, at least, will be Christian. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and it's not as though the Antichrist will take this beautiful, uh, true to doctrine Christian church and do a radical change so that it's the Christian church of the Antichrist. It will be given to him on a platter. <laughs> <laughs> okay so it means that the christ that what we consider to be christian churches are already moving over our yeah. doctrine of devils is entering 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 so that when the, the antichrist stands up it'll be like oh okay thank you thank you for delivering this christian church to, to me and there is only one true gospel. If you distort it a little bit, it's no longer the gospel. Exactly right. And do you remember uh, who they were? Who who the example was? Emily. It's Apostle Paul gives them a specific name, and he curses them for adding anything to the gospel. They were the Nicolaitan. Well, Nicolaitan. That's a very good. That's very good from uh, Revelation too. That's. That is more like priest-like figures that intercede between people and God. Okay, so that's, that, that's why Jesus speaks very poorly of the Nicolaitans. But you might remember when I put, put the word up, the Judy, I'm not sure if I spelled it correctly, but it's the Judaizers. Okay, so they were they were new Christians who 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 believed in Jesus Christ. 
yet they wanted to follow the law specifically when it came to circumcision. So they added on a law from the old covenant, obviously from the old Testament and said, no, 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 you have to do this. And adding one old covenant law to the gospel of Jesus Christ was enough for them to be cursed. <laughs> they created a new gospel that I just was adding just one thing. So imagine how many things the Catholic Church has added to the gospel. Not one. Thousands of pages. Right. And, and they unfortunately, they put on an equal weight the traditions of the church and the Bible. And they say the two of them have equal weight. Uh, and so their traditions are of equal importance. But anyway, so. So uh, the, that, uh, uh, put the legalism on uh, over there. True, true. The, well, well le legalism. So remember that the, that's a, a generalized fault for both Jews in the Old Testament and, and, and people can be guilty of legalism in, in the New Testament too, if their heart is not in the right place, right? If, if they, mm -hmm. they believe that, you know, so I believe that that was the name uh, given for the, 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 the Pharisees and the Sadducees, right? Who were, they were very well-educated Jews Paul, Apostle Paul was a highly educated yeah. Pharisee, but he was into legalism, yeah. right? He, he was so into like legalism that he would kill Christians. So um, obviously he did not have the heart that God intended in the old covenant. He was not a good Jew. He thought he was following the Jewish law, but he was, he was being evil. So he, he was, it was the sin of legalism, among other things. Yeah. So, but very, very well remembered that adding anything, adding one word or taking one word away from the Bible, uh, and we'll get to this, to one of my favorite verses in the Bible in just a few chapters. Uh, oh, I was going to the Portuguese, so I can't do that. I have to give you that in English. It's the almost the penultimate verse in the entire Bible. And I'm getting to it. Thank you for your patience. Mm -hmm. And it says, it's Revelation 22, 19. It's the third to last verse. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, all right, so take away one word from the book of Revelation. Take away one word from the Bible in general. God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which were written in this book. So you don't want to be responsible for removing any word from the Bible. Uh, and I'll remind you the uh, NIV the new international version removes in comparison to the King James Bible, 64,000 words. Mm -hmm. All right. So do you think that that's, that's, that's all they had to remove was one <laughs> 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 word and they were in trouble if they actually mm -hmm. believe the Bible, but they don't. So they're like, yeah. ah, you know, I'll take out 64,000. We'll have a much more fun Bible. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I've gone, I've gone on too long. So any other questions or comments? Uh, who is Madonna? I was a little bit confused. Ah, okay. I, I'm, I'm glad you asked that. Madonna, I'm not referring to the, the, the pop star. <laughs> okay. All right, there's that singer, that blonde uh, woman horrible horrible woman <laughs> madonna but that her, she's of italian heritage and madonna is actually a word from italian yeah and the the what i was and you'll see this in 
hundreds of Renaissance paintings, when you have Mary and baby Jesus, that is called the Madonna and child. So it's a, it's a reference to religious imagery. Uh, mm -hmm. The Madonna and child uh, is, is when you have Mary and the little baby Jesus, and you see that image everywhere. And so in English, okay. that's, that's called the Madonna and child imagery, right? So, okay. so that's Madonna, a famous. Yeah, Madonna means uh, what in Italian? It, I think it's mother, maybe, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Uh, yeah. Has a, a famous um, statue uh, with mom and child, is that Pietà? Exactly, exactly. Uh, uh, that, that's a famous sculpture inside the, sculpture, you know, yeah. St. Peter's in, in the yeah. Vatican. In the Vatican. And it's uh, by a Rubens, I think the sculptor, but that's a famous, famous piece of the yeah. Madonna and child. So good question, because I'm not talking about the modern, you know, uh, remember Madonna sings that awful song. It's like, I'm a material girl and a material <laughs> girl. <laughs> right. so, and well, I guess that's true. That's what Mary, mother, that's what the Mary is doing. She's becoming like the, the, the political Babylon commercial material queen. <laughs> so, little did Madonna know how she was tell, telling the truth about <laughs> Yeah, and the, the Italian people, the Italian people, they, they, some, they do this uh, Madonna, they, they always uh, said something like Madonna, Madonna, <laughs> I think is a, is a mom, but I think is sometimes is a, a, a woman in general, I think. Or, or a pregnant woman. I, you know, so it's it's like I, I mm. because you're right. When when you know the Italians are are very gentlemanly. When a pregnant woman's about to cross the street, all the cars will stop, right? And it's like Madonna, Madonna. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, very well remembered. So we're making fun of this, but guys, it's also serious, all right? Yeah. Because if if uh, if, if Mary is the image of the queen of heaven, is the, uh, the great whore, uh, worship of her uh, is what will unite all the world's religions. Mm -hmm. So all of these things that we joke about are all helping to lead towards this culmination. Um, so to be avoided. All right, so any other uh, questions or comments? A lot of good questions tonight. Every, everyone is completely, I think, I think it's because I was being tough on women that you're all like, okay, I got some questions. <laughs> <laughs> so any others or shall I stop? I'll stop the recording then. So they, they've heard enough.